you're I'm calling the meeting to order. Okay. Second. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Clearly, I'm still <laughs> with this. That's all right. <laughs> oh, are you ready? <laughs> Don is so good. Okay. Um, so I will hand it over to the No, we got to approve the minutes. Oh, we got to approve the minutes? Okay. Does anybody have any? No, fine. I move the second minutes to from January 8th, please. Second that. Okay, I'm doing it. Okay, so I sent you your financial statements in the um, in the email. Um, we did have one large expenditure. We had a frozen pipe incident, and the bill from Jamrock totals seven thousand seven hundred and twenty-three dollars and two cents. Which, if you go to page four, like right in the middle of the page that says Function Code four two two zero, where it says General Building Repairs, and if you go to the right, there's fifteen thousand three eighty six twenty three. This just sucked that number right in half. For one pipe? Um, I don't know. Um, okay, call for cold administrative wing found frozen reheat coil in attic and burst pipe. Repiped heating, pipe to coil, thawed out heating supply line, added antifreeze to system. Also, oh, that's part of the so antifreeze system now. Okay. So we talked about this last meeting, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. It happened over the break. I don't think we had the bill yet, though, for last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. But I think Bob was, t I asked Bob or Bob told us or whatever that the antifreeze between here and Conway was going to be like two to $4,000 for each school for the, just the antifreeze. The antifreeze was $4,860. So the rest of the repair was over 3000 Some kind of antifreeze. And the labor was 2635 Yeah. So it's never going to freeze again because you have this in the system now, okay. this, this glycol something or another. That's what, Kennedy, what was that cup under? Um, if you page four, the the function code that says maintenance of buildings for two two zero, it's like almost right in the middle of the paper, and it's on, it says expense building general repairs, and the budget number is thirty thousand. If you look to the far right, the budget balance is fifteen thousand three eighty six <coughs> eighty twenty three. Yeah. Well, this seven seven twenty three zero two just like cut that in half. Okay. So is there much left? In terms of maintenance for the year? Or well, do we, so now it's like we. Is there stuff that that's planned we, for? Or? No. Wing yeah. in a prayer until we get through the heating system. Yeah, it's not a not Did we plan. Have season. That's all there to help with these things. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a, a line item or a warrant of money for the sprinkler system? Was there money left over yes. for something? Yes, but that right now, that's kind of. I'm the, old. That's yeah. the money that's going to be used by the town to start the project of maybe paying for, a, you know, an engineer or, okay, you know, that's sitting there. It's like thirty thousand or twenty eight thousand. I'm not accessing that right now in any way. But that's I didn't know if when we have our meetings about the sprinkler system, that's that's sort of the current pool of money that we'll pay for. Well, this is it. different than the sprinkler system. This anyways. is different. No, but yeah. Bob was asking. But the, but it's still a pipe part of the sprinkler system. Correct? No, no, it's the heating system. Oh, heat, oh the heating system. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we'll, yeah. well, it sounds like so we had money to cover. It's just that if we have other things, then we'll yeah, we're, just we're tight. We'll have to be careful. Okay. We're tight. Um, and tonight you have um, seven warrants totaling $60,975.28. And that that Jamrock bill is in the in that sixty thousand. You'll see that in there. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. I just have a, and I, you probably answered them last time, and I apologize. Uh, nurses supplies were over by one hundred and fifty dollars, twenty one percent. What page are you on? I'm on page okay. three for nurses' supplies. Okay, um, so that would be something that um, the principal has a little bit of discretion, and he just now knows he needs to save $151 in another line. And Pete, um, I will tell you, um, 
I always say it's sort of like trying to keep track of it on the back of a matchbook, but he does a very good job <laughs> with it. He does. He really does. And I think that what happens sometimes, and, and, and so when, when we see those overages, Bob, that's what prompts me and Patty to say, do we need to put more money in this line item or do we not? Like, and, the, like uh, the $100 off on the stipends for, um, for Nature's Classroom were over $100. Yeah, that wasn't so much about what, what changed in that is that that used to be an overnight stipend and it turned into a daily stipend. Okay. Right, so what overnights, was three overnights, daily stipend is four days. Are we going to have to plan on? That's it, yeah. Okay. I think we've already addressed that okay. when, when we talked. But the other thing with the nurse's office is that every, and I don't know how often, I don't think it's yearly, but maybe it's every two years, we have to replace the batteries in the automatic defibrillator, mm -hmm. the pads, and that's that's expensive. And we did add an, uh, the nurse's equipment line because of that. And there's $400 sitting there, and there's 319.16 left, and that's that's basically the equipment is to, to maintain our AED machine. Are we going to go over any more on uh, classroom assistance? We're over by over a thousand dollars so far. Are we going to think we're going to be over any more on that one? Where, what page do you have? Uh, page two, salary classroom assistance. Okay, we're over uh, function twenty two three three zero. See, we're net nine twenty six zero nine. So um, no, that would be we, we're saving about one hundred and three ten. Um, and, and what happens um, with these when we do our uh, assistance is when I do the budget in December, I budget for where they are, and then Pete can move them. Okay. So they, so we might be over here, but we we could be under in the school choice. And if it looks like that, then I'm going to take like maybe one week's worth of payroll and stick it over in school choice, or vice versa, take something off school choice and I'll, I'll stick it over here. And just sometimes it gets frustrating for me. Not knowing I know that happens, whether we should plan any differently or well, you know, I know it goes from year to year different with the assistants, right? But there was no change in the number of assistants. So mm -hmm. so I think it's what Patty's saying is that some may have been, you know, paid out of one budget line item and some others and you know, they may okay. not be where we expected them to be. But then I just no have to balance that. them out and that's what I do when I do it like once a month when I'm getting this report ready, I'm looking. So for nine hundred and twenty-six dollars, I'm not concerned yet, um, and I do think that my encumbrances are, you know, pretty accurate. I would say they're about ninety-five percent accurate, so I'm not too concerned about that. Okay. One other way to say it, Bob, is that we built this budget for eight instructional assistants, and we have eight, eight. instructional assistants, and they're the same ones that we, you know, it's not like there's been a change and somebody more expensive. Can Okay. So then why do you have to balance it out between the two different funds? I because I might put somebody in, like, into the, so I might put somebody like in regular uh, IAs and then she yeah. ends up being the SPED person. Yeah. And the SPED person's budget is over in the, in the, uh, school choice. in the school choice. Right. So I have to take that and they get paid differently. Okay. They're not on the same rate. One might be a step Their nine, one might, might be, be a step 11. So I just have to flip them, and then I just I just watch the money at the end to the end of the year. Okay. But then, so then you bring in a different IA who's back up the salary that you had originally planned for. Correct. Okay. 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 Any other questions on the? What bottom line? Or do you feel like we're on track? I do. Year? I I, I am a little the the seven thousand bill seven thousand dollars right, bill has me a little worried, okay. but I think we'll be okay because. Um, We've got some um, money. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a little extra heating money. We usually do. So I can think of a couple of line items. We, we can talk about it where I think we'll be fine. So we're not we're not in that stage that we've been in other years where we say, "Hey, we stopped all spending." I mean, that's what sometimes we've had sure. to do right. that a couple of times. We're in pretty good shape still. So. No, we're yeah, we're in good shape. Okay. It, it just always it's like when you get a bill that big, you're like, yeah. Okay. Um, we want a public comment? Some public comment? No. No? <laughs> okay. no public comment from me. <laughs> Any time. Um, we want to have capital projects. Is there enough to have capital projects? Well, the pipe was fixed. Yeah. And I see that um, Pete has put in um, the double doors at the back of the gymnasium have been replaced. When were they replaced? Um, just in the past month, I don't remember the exact date, over the holidays maybe. Great. Yeah. And the brickwork? 
the around the water fountain? Yep, that's been done too just last week. Great. Yeah, the water fountain's great. Yeah. yeah. That was the first item on my principal's report, but since we're on it, okay. I can just complete it and say that you know, now that the fountain is in, we are sending back two of our water coolers, oh, so we'll be spending less money on water. We have three different water coolers, cafeteria, um, teacher's lounge, and in the nurse's office, and now we're just going to have one in the, in the teacher's lounge. And um, the cafeteria, we're using pictures of water now from the new one. Oh, okay. uh, and the nurse, too. She's painting the pictures of water. So the phone system, is there any update on that? They just finished in Conway. Just finished. They finished. They were supposed to be done before the first, and I think they finished Wednesday. So they're due to start here any day. So I do know that they did pick a vendor uh, called that Vortex, and that becomes like your Verizon. And um, the problem with the Net Vortex is they have to charge, they will not bill you, they have to charge a credit card. So I get an email saying, your Waitley account has been set up on your American Express. And I'm like, okay. So I call Scott Paul, and I said, Scott, we can't use the Frontier American Express. And so I had a conversation with um, Lynn Sibley, the treasurer, okay. and there is a credit card for the town. Um, but she wanted to think about it a little more because she might have you guys sign off on a blanket warrant so that they can pay it not incur charges okay and i said well if, if that's your concern i said what i what i do is we can we pay our american express and then i can bill you back mm -hmm. so that every month there, there's going to be a bill in here from frontier regional to pay the net the warrant you can't right. pay like annually well it fluctuates yeah. monthly yeah. Oh. um based on the number of minutes people use. Oh, okay. um, so uh, right now, so Lynn said, well, give me the, week. I talked to her Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I was gone Thursday, Friday. She said, let me think about it. And I didn't have time to check okay. back in with her. So there's gonna be a situation with the billing, um, but, but Lynn and I are working it out. Okay. In terms of progress on the project, I can tell you that what's happening is that, I think the last time we talked, I told you that we had identified a phone that we liked, but at some point we decided we didn't like it as much as we thought okay. we did. So there's a new model phone that we've chosen, and this is what Patty's talking about, and tested. And, uh, you know, testament to our IT department, they really wanted us to be very specific about functions that we wanted this system to do. Okay. And that's partly why it's taken a little bit of time to choose the right phone. So once once those phones came in, um, Mayor Lisensky in particular, since she's the, the <laughs> she's on person the on the phone, the phone <laughs> uh, went over to central office, they had the phone set up, and mm -hmm. they tested them out and decided that, that they would be, you know, that they would be good for us. Mm -hmm. uh, on a separate note, we use Weston Communications, I think they're called, to do the wiring in the building, and the gentleman's been here for, let's say, two weeks running wiring through the building, so okay. progress is happening. Once the phone part of the project is done, then we'll move on to the intercoms and the clocks. And the AC is all ready for the server? No, nope. AC has not AC has to still go into this closet that hasn't okay. happened yet. Okay. And I think that's only because the company it, we issued the purchase order, but I think they've been busy fixing people's frozen pipes. Yeah, so it's they jam it's jam rock. So okay. we're gonna have to wait till the busy season comes down a little bit. Is it the same is it the same phone system that Conway did? I don't think Conway was replacing their phone, they were no, replacing they were their intercom. Intercom. Because their it's, phones have been replaced since I've been here. Okay. It's not the same phone system that went into central office. It almost was. But it's a different, different brand. So what is Net Vortex then? That's the provider so, of the yeah. phone service? Yep. They've become your like your new year Verizon. And the internet? The that the, the voice over internet protocol becomes part of our bill from Crocker. Okay. This is all going to wait until the air conditioning? It's not going to wait. Oh, okay. it's, it's moving forward. They can the install it. They need yeah. that to run it. Yeah. The, yeah. the room's not as bad right now because it is <laughs> winter. Yeah. It's only going to be a problem when it gets to be July. Yeah. And by then, JamRog will have it in. Okay. Um, I can give an, I went to the capital budget meeting, the planning meeting. And, um, the pipes are the top item for the town, which is great. So they were very supportive. Oh, that's right. 
they just don't know the number, but I guess I'm hoping we'll find out after February. And they do have that 30,000 to start with. And then they're prepared to help fund whatever else needs to happen. Oh, good. So that was helpful. Are they leaning, are they leaning towards still about doing a scope on it to see how how gross of things are I think are that's first? the plan over February break. They're going to mm -hmm. hire someone to come in and try and give us a Seems like the easiest pipe. thing to do, you open up a pipe, you stick something in, and you and start looking at it on a, on a TV screen. The way they explained it to us, the way this thing is, it's like it's trying to like, it, it's like if you compare it to your body system, you're trying to look at every vein in your body. Mm -hmm. So there's just, it's the number and the t the, the tiny size of it mm -hmm. that makes it difficult. But so I guess by our next meeting we'll have a better estimate of what hopefully what the plan is. And while we're talking about the town, we should say that we have confirmed our date to meet with their finance and their uh, select board. And it will be February 27th at right. 6 o'clock. Um, the only person who cannot make that date is uh, Mr. Modesto. Because when we go, we do both the elementary and the high yeah. school, so that we don't have to do two. Yeah. Um, and Mr. Bernesto has sixth grade um, orientation. orientation that evening. So what was the date? The twenty seventh at six o'clock at town hall. Town hall. Yeah. That school committee and finance committee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and sometimes the select board there too. Um, great. What do you um, and they were the town was asking about anything for Frontier for capital, but I don't know if they reach out to you separately. We were asking for a tractor, a lot tractor. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm trying to get things on their list, so then when we need other things, we'll see. The, the paving's on the list, so that's good. Um, okay, do we want to do the budget discussion now, or do we want to go through anything else before the last meeting? It's a Tuesday morning, the 27th. Okay, thank you. Um, Tuesday morning, does it make sense? Yeah. Yes. Or do they, well, any of the make sense? The reports make sense. This might help to go through the NESDAQ. Yeah, I was thinking something that might be yeah. helpful. The NESDAQ report came, it's this green, this lovely colored green report, and was it in the thing? Did you get it in your packet? Yeah. Yeah, I can print it. I, I, and, um, here, I printed it. Thank you. So, um, keep the color. So the information goes into NESDAQ pretty much in the fall, I think. Well, kind of after October 1st. and they keep track for us and it's it's part of our collaboration with them and you can see it's pretty self-explanatory um self-explanatory the historical enrollment by grade the date you know the year of birth how many births happened in the town and um where they are so when you look further down, you can look at the enrollment and grade combinations. So 2017-18, pre-K to 6, there's 97 children. K to 5, there's 70. K to 6, there's 81. <coughs> and they break it down again, K8, 5, 8, 6, 8, 7, 8, and then the 7, 12, and the 9, 12. Not a lot of changes. Uh, historical percentage of change, 13-14, uh, there was a big dip, 11-12, there was a big dip, 16-17, uh, it went down 3%, but... Historically, it's going down. So this is, um, sorry, just residents, this page, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's just residents. And then when you look at your weight leading mass historical, but that um, percent change, that's K through 12. Yep. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. And when when you look at you know, know the elementary's not as bad as it's yeah, it looks like the elementary's declining a little bit, but it's more the middle and high school. High school is we only have forty seven people more. in the high school between seventh and twelve. I'm I'm just gonna check That's, that. That there. is for um, this year, forty seven weightly people and uh grade eight seven people per grade. 
I have 48. There's 48 residents mm -hmm. at the range now. Down from 100 and The uh, historical enrollment, again, is, this is including our pre-K, which has really bumped our numbers up nicely. Mm -hmm. And you can see where 2017, at one point, they had 145 students. <coughs> yeah, but and my understanding is this does include schools, right? So uh, my understanding is oh. this is what is enrolled in. Who are you on the next week? Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> Who's enrolled in yes. the building? This thing is They also give us projections, and there's quite a, a formula. When I was getting my superintendent certification, I had to actually <coughs> work with a person that does this. Because his name was Kennedy, and he explained to me the um, formula to do this, and it's, it's quite interesting. But uh, so you can see the projections right up to from now at 145. Um, next year they're looking at 147. Pretty standard 148, a few down in 2021. So if this report was done 124 2018, how come they're only mm -hmm. they're using estimated births for 16 and 17? You would think that those numbers would be in. Yeah. I don't know. They probably and they put nine. They think there's going to be nine persons. Well, let's go with the Maybe there's a delay from when they get the there. There was. Yeah. I don't know where they. they I don't know where they down. get their information yeah. from. Uh, as far as births, <clears throat> it looks to me like it's an average between ten, seven, eleven, and seven, which might be actual. Nine looks like the average number. I, so, consequently, there, it doesn't look like a lot of movement. What does the green line mean? Mm -hmm. The differences? Like the projections going out to 23 and then... Yeah, I think it, things are starting to go down. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what I think. That's really turns down. Or is that where we are, Katie, 2017? Well, on this page, the, the third page, there's a green line that's sort of across the middle yeah. of each yeah. one. Well, it's, but it seems it, to be under the year 2017, so I'm wondering if that means that's that's so that's where we are. Okay. Oh, actual. These should be actual. The right year. That's what I'm saying. In the the, year. the rest should be projected. Perhaps you're right. Okay. And the next page is the projection. Oh, I'm just curious as to how do they kind of do these estimates, projected estimates, because it's very stable. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> not a lot of fluctuation. Not a lot, yeah. Well, we're only going to allow nine people to, you know. Procreate. <laughs> so I'm looking at the projected enrollment and grade combinations. And it's interesting to see where there's, in the 7-12, there is 47 this year, but they're projecting 52 lately residents next year, 55 and 51. And I'm wondering if that isn't, if they're not able to take into effect students, they may choose to go to private schools. Or charter schools. Uh -huh. well, or maybe they're trying to take into account that there's some big grades coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, my understanding is our large grades are 7 and 8. 7 mm -hmm. and 8. Those are our large grades now. It looks like we have 4th, 5th, and 6th. Mm -hmm. 6th has 16 residents in it. I didn't have, I should have printed these out. That's a lot of it. Um, but we did, at, at, the, um, at the, in December, we had 11 kids out in, um, in choice and one in charter. Mm. So we only had 12 uh, elementary students. Well, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they got 16 down for estimated at 17, when we only got 12 kids, actual kids. So the, maybe they include the choice, people yeah. that choice out? Uh, residents? In sixth grade? Yeah. That, I bet, that's year they I bet they're 16. projecting public school kids. Maybe. So 17, 18, I'm seeing 11 in sixth grade. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm going to need sixth grade here for 2017. 
it says 16 right here. Here's sixth grade. Here's 2017, and it says 16 right there if I follow it down and across. Oh, no, that's the birth year. This is oh, the birth geez. year. This would be the birth year. Six. So this is how many sixth graders there were that year? Yeah, so, and, uh, so oh, kids that were born in 2012 line. are in school this year in 17, 18. So and they got 11, and we got 12, actual 12, so. Right, so I it's see. not an exact science, right. but. But fifth grade has 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is a big grade coming up yeah. that would bump up front to the higher grades. Yeah, yeah, because but this school, the smallest yeah. grades, and, and when Pete gets a chance to discuss this, you can see where next year's fifth grade, which is this year's only nine town. I don't know how many kids are actually in the class, but mm -hmm. it looks like he's planning ahead for school choice mm -hmm. to, to fill in those slots. So yeah, it's not an exact, but it does but tell you to have. Yeah, it's great information. So is this the first year we're getting this, or have you get this before? No, we've blown this. This oh, is sorry. the second report we've gotten since I Okay. So I think it's very helpful. Is this a private group, or is it a state? Like a collaborative? It, it's a private company. It's they're all over the, the all over New England. When I was in New Hampshire, when I was an assistant superintendent, we had this. Um, we had these reports. We use them for a lot of different. To, to help budgeting, planning, mm -hmm. and getting an idea. I saw a lot of schools are members of it when I went on the website. Mm -hmm. So I, it looks to me they're uh, projecting a kind of a flat line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same. Better than, you know, except for the birth mm -hmm. projections aren't great. So when we look at the <laughs> to kindergarten relationship, um, I don't know. I don't know. We're looking at 15 to seven back up to higher than 50. <laughs> I don't know. We, uh, well, it's sort of, the birth is the dark green, right? Mm -hmm. it's it's still can't remember kindergarten's seven kind of following the same pattern. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll give this to you to look at when I'm done so you can see it. I'm not. Uh, what I got this thing here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can tell us about it. Well, I don't know about those numbers, but my attention was drawn to, uh, back to page one, sort of the historical enrollment and looking at pre-K through six. And, you know, there's lots of ways to add up numbers, but the, the column on the very left in that, in that box at the bottom, the left hand, the box on the left hand side, mm -hmm. yep. If, if you, for example, if you did a three year, you know, 2007 through 2010, if you did a three year average, which I just did, um, that, that number is 86.1. If you look at the next three years, 2010 to 2013, that number is 76.1. So a drop from the first three years from the second. You know, you can average four years if you yeah. want, or two years, but just, just to give you a sense. And then the next three years, 2013 to 2016, goes back up to 83.2. So it's, you know, it's bouncing around a little bit. And the, But then if you look at the next two years, we don't have a third year to compare, but we have a 91 and a 97. And um, I know we don't know what next year is going to be, but none of the previous three year averages have numbers that high, right? Mm -hmm. There's only one in the first three year averages in 94. There's no 90s in the second or the third one. So one would presume that that number is going to be, you know, we have to really drop off. That number is going to be probably as high as the first one, if not a little bit higher. You see what I'm driving at? Yeah. 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 So the preschool, though, are like those all residents, or how do we count them? No, they're not all they're residents. Not. No, but those are the numbers we've got. So I just wanted yeah. to give a sense of, you know, so it does feel quite level, you know. Yeah. The the elementary school numbers over those years seem more stable than the seven through twelve yeah, numbers that had a lot drop. Mm -hmm. more drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The good news is, is that uh, as we speak, uh, a number of our pre-K students who are not Wakeley residents uh -huh. are, are taking out applications yeah. of choice for next year. Because we also expanded the pre-K, right, yes. over those okay. years, that's so that's big maybe big partly big reflected big. there. But it does seem like elementary is more steady, which is great. It's definitely a school of choice. I mean, that's, do you got, are there other takeaways that people have? The last page seems to be more just like general information about the town. One other thing that, I, that comes to mind for me is, again, it's not my data, but I've heard for a number of years now that in this region, the population is decreasing. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's something to think about. And aging. And aging. 
Um, we're babies. Um, so I think overall when we look at the entire district, I'm not sure, um, and I can talk to Don Kennedy if this 1180, I'm not sure that includes our choice because we have 600 students right at the high school and we have 400 in Deerfield, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not sure that, I think that's just people that, you know, because residents. our choice, I think there's 140 students at the high school that are choice, at the middle high school at 7 to 12. Mm -hmm. so. so are they projecting any districts to grow? Well, our Sunderland is, is definitely mm -hmm. growing. Um, they, they're growing. Because if, if it's, it's pretty flat growing up, but it seems like growth must come from somewhere <coughs> to make that. The, the, to me, I think the flat is good, um, and I think some of that might have to do with the preschool, because most of the other schools around here are probably projecting a little bit lower. Oh, even worse than we are? Oh yeah, I think okay. this flat line is great news. Okay. And, and I'm wondering if the idea that we're adding the preschool is helping us stay. Mm -hmm. Or it's kind of inflating it's, that, yeah. boosting it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but it's true, it, it's, it's information and it's good yeah, information. It's, it's just kind of hard to, to figure out. So if we wanted to, if you felt like you wanted to do the super the principals report that would be great. Yeah, sure. You can. I'm happy to do that. So, so I'll just walk you through this a little bit. I won't read okay. every word on it, but we already did number one, the building updates. Um, so school choice, I, I wanted you to see the ad that we put in the paper. Mm -hmm. All right, and I don't know if you saw it, but it was actually in the paper. This won't be the last one, this is just the first one. I'll run it at least one more time, maybe two, depending on the response we get. Uh, and we have seen some response already. We did get a couple of calls as soon as this went out. And um, the grades that you see in the third to last line, that does reflect where we have openings, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and kindergarten is always there's always openings in kindergarten. And this year, as I said, we not only do we have residents who are signing up. Um, I can share this with you, but right for the moment, I'll read it to you. So we have there are nine uh, residents that have uh, taken kindergarten registration paperwork home, and there are about five more in our pre-K that are school choice that are. Uh, request that are looking at us to, for kindergarten. Um, so that you know, that brings us up to 14 already for kindergarten, and that doesn't include anything that we may get from yeah. other schools. And Mary also told me that there's three, she's got three residents on the census that have not responded yet, but one did call for a tour. So mm -hmm. there's a potential of three more residents. Mm -hmm. Uh, where, then, where was that advertisement? Pardon? Where was that posted? On the Gazette and the Recorder. We have two days in both. And we'll probably repeat that at least one more time, again, depending on the response we get. We might want to run a third one if we're not happy with the response. But it's around this time of year that people start thinking, I mean, actually it's early for families to mm -hmm. start thinking about it, but we wanted to anticipate that and get an ad out there sooner than later. And then, of course, the rest of the grades, you know, first, third, fourth, and fifth are the other grades where we have openings. And as I said to you at the last meeting, those openings are based on the 18 to 20 enrollment mm -hmm. that, that, that you folks have approved. Um, and, uh, well, I, I wouldn't mind touching on that again. Where did that come from, that number, the 18 to 21? I know I, we always say the school been, committee approved it's been it. That but since, yep. It's been so that since. With the principal's discretion on 18 to 20. Uh -huh. Right, but the, the question is, what, Came up what with is that it number. based on? Like, I, I do can't, we have a sense? I don't know. I mean, it's been, obviously, smaller is better. It's been 18 to 20 since I've been your principal. <laughs> okay. That's a number I inherited. So at some point, a school committee, right. I don't know if you were on it, Bob, at the time, mm -hmm. but this school committee set that target. And I don't know when, yeah. but it's been at least nine years because mm -hmm. that's all I have been doing. So when you say 18 to 20, we don't have many. What do we have right now? We have yeah. two at 20. Two at 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah two at 20. Everything else is 17, 18, some 16. Yeah, and Katie, what I try to do is, 14. I try to, um, I'm happy to push the number up to 20, you know, in, in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, you know, um, in the earlier grades, uh, a little bit smaller number is maybe more helpful for instruction, but also mm -hmm. um, if we have, 
you know, if we have 20 in all the early grades and then more residents move in, you know, then now we could be looking at classrooms of 23, 24, which is not terrible. Yeah. But that's why we try to be careful with that number because if we take school choice kids and push the number up to 19 or 20 in first grade, that's fine. But that's a class that could grow with residents, not necessarily with choice kids, because, you know, again, that's a, that's a negotiation we would have to have. Mm -hmm. um, if we wanted to go above 20 with school choice kids, I would need your approval to do that. Um, but certainly, as, as residents move in, we have had years where we've had 22 or 23 in six, you know, fifth or sixth grade, mm -hmm. and that's just natural growth because we, you know, we push the number higher with choice kids, and then we have more residents move in, so the number gets a little bit bigger. Well, how does it work if a choice kid you can't kick them out once they come. No, they're, ours. they're here to yeah. stay for the duration. That's correct. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm just very mindful that school choice is really how to cover a good part of our budget, mm -hmm. and to the extent that we can maximize the, speed, the students and the capacity, exactly more school doing. choice kids is going to really help provide for all the. And we have a lot of teachers and services that a lot of schools. Right. I so, don't want to have to cut the services, and until we get enough school choice in to cover everything, right. so that's example, how we would maintain it. So just to give you a, a real life example, so, yeah. so uh, this, uh, the October 1 census says we have 17 um, students in kindergarten, mm -hmm. right? So if that's going to be next year's first grade, right. right? So if I get three school choice applications, or even four, right. and we do a lottery, I'll take three of them, and now I'm going to have a first grade of 20, right? right? And in theory, that first grade is only going to grow now with residents, not with school choice kids, mm -hmm. for the next five years. Unless this committee says, let's open up grades to more school choice. Right. Right. I, don't know. I, I just wonder if we want to bump it up to 21. Just to, I don't, I'm not trying to make this classes too big, but I'm also mindful of the, or what people's opinion is. Probably depends on the class. Too. Yeah, that, that's, that's the key. biggest thing. That's yeah. the biggest thing, what the class, if, well, that's a hard thing to, to gauge yeah, because that's going yeah. to change over time. So if you change well, we the number, we should, we, we we should go by like, first or second grade. The, the bigger, but the bigger issue is not so much the, the makeup of the classroom in terms of the diversity of students in terms of you know, that sort of thing. The bigger issue is we can push it up to 21, but there's no guarantee You'll that get our it. advertising is going right. to Right. That's why I'm wondering if we just push it up just to give us a little bit more leverage if we do get a more school choice. The other thing is we have an aide in every class, right? So right. that's pretty well staffed. For st I mean, I think teachers, it's good for them to have aides, but I think not every school has that. And uh, yeah, I don't think every school in our district has that, right? Yeah, and just to be clear, I'm not asking you to change it. I'm just pointing out. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're the I'm one being asked about it, so I'm asking everyone else about I'll, I'll it. Give you, I'll, give, I'll give you my opinion. I, I like the 18 to 20. Mm -hmm. pupil class size um, and I've seen people have 20 to you know 25 and it's right. it's, well, not a, it's, it's not, not a pretty, ideal it's not a it's not a pretty sight some in some cases and stuff so mm -hmm. and 25 you know I mean does one you know there again if Pete gets four applications and we keep it at 20 but he knows the We'll say the makeup of the class, you know, twenty one might be the might be the that particular year and that's what we could that class could hold from fourth grade, fifth mm -hmm. grade and sixth grade down the road, the makeup. Mm -hmm. If Pete finds out that that particular class needs nineteen or or less. Yes, and, and that, I mean I, we, I there have been there has been an example or two in the time I've been here where we maybe have had a class of 18 mm -hmm. uh, that's maybe heavy with IEPs, and we've decided to not take kids in that right. grade just right. because you know, um, and that's you know that's that's the choice between a, a, a manageable classroom where all kids can learn versus you know um, an extra ten thousand dollars whatever in school choice money, mm -hmm. and we there there have been one or two times I can recall where we've said let's just leave this class alone. You know. I'm a I'm a firm believer in. You know, keeping a number where where it's where it's manageable in the classroom mm -hmm. by the teacher and the aide. Keeping in mind that that again, I, I've shared with this committee before that um, that's what parents write on their school choice applications. They like the small okay. classroom yeah. size. They like that <coughs> every kid is you know valued, and we know every child, and we know their families. You get to know you know that mm -hmm. small classroom um, 
aesthetic is really what, what most people write about when they say why they're looking to come here. So to, to push the numbers up could, could keep some people away. So it's a balancing act. Wow. I think we leave it where it is for right now, but I think it's good to I'll keep in mind I'll that... I'll you next month on how we yeah, do Yeah, and see how the full choice applications are coming in. And if also as the budgets start to get tighter and tighter, we might need to revisit that a little bit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So along those lines, one of the things that I've been discussing a little bit with, um, with Kim McCarthy is, um, again, keeping our, keeping our school at the forefront of early childhood and um, we, we recalled, um, Kim and I recalled that a, a few years ago, we had the folks from REACH came to our school to do a couple of meetings because I think they were transitioning from one office to another. I, I could be wrong about that, but I think I remember um, Kim telling me that's why they came. And I thought, well, why don't we invite them back now that we have this awesome, great new preschool classroom coming in. And sure enough, um, uh, and again, I won't read that whole item there for you, but Arlene Spooner, who is, I think, a physical therapist by trade, um, but is an administrator now. Um, she had her last meeting of REACH providers from around the district here, and it's a, they call it a tea, and they have conversations about hot topics and early intervention is my, my, my recollection of um, sort of the description I got of it. And uh, they're gonna come back, and hopefully we'll have a couple more meetings this year. But it, it keeps us in the spotlight, it keeps people coming into our school, it keeps people talking about it. So besides having the opportunity for our staff to jump in on those meetings and, and uh, and learn. Um, it's also uh, an attempt at marketing our early childhood program. So I wanted well, you to be aware of that. Who are the participants? Are they parents of young kids? Uh, no, they're professionals. People who oh. work in the field. Yeah, this is for this is for providers. Okay. Yeah. So what does Reach stand for? Reach. I'm not sure what the acronym is, but they're an early intervention program. Oh. Yeah, they work with kids zero to three years old so um, who have um, early intervention needs. When they're the ones that two and three, they go to preschool to services. Yep, and then yeah, those are the kids that if they have that, if they have needs that our providers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the town of Waitley and every town tries to meet those kids' needs. Mm -hmm. so is the, are they for a certain region? Reach or is yeah, it? they have they have different regions. They're, like they're Franklin County. Oh. Franklin County. Okay. okay, so anyway, that was just a FYI in terms of what we're trying to do to keep our, uh, our preschool in the forefront, and then the rest is just fun stuff. I wanted to make sure you had dates because we always would like you to come with us if you can. Um, but uh, the first is that um, this week, February 6th, uh, our Global Leaders Group, that's tomorrow, mm -hmm. is going to the Soldier's Home in Holyoke to deliver Valentine's Day cards. That's been going on for years. Uh, on the 9th, we have our Coordinated Family Community Engagement Program, which is directed by Karen Green, Family Science Night, and you will get a robocall about a couple of these things because we're not, we don't have uh, all the sign-up that we'd like right now. So tomorrow night, around this time, we'll probably get a robocall from you. <laughs> Uh, PTO Book Fair is this weekend in Hadley uh, from 12 to 4. We are bringing back the Tanglewood Marionettes for an encore performance of Dragon King and uh, the Waitley Cultural Council, thank you very much, has um, once again funded that um, in full, which is awesome, and they have been such a great supporter of arts in our school. I want to thank them publicly uh, for constantly supporting uh, the arts here at Waitley Elementary School. And last but not least, the uh, PTO Pancake Breakfast is March 4th. So I just gave you the highlights for the next month or so. So, do you know when the marionettes are coming? I thought that was an awesome. Yeah, is, um, anybody oh, I didn't put the date in there. I, yeah. we, we do have a date. I'm sorry, okay. I forgot to add it, and I don't have my calendar in front of me. But I'll. I'll is it I'll on the website? It's on yeah. our. It's, it's okay. on our master calendar. I can check it before the meeting's over if you like, and let you know. And um, the book fair is this Sunday, and we are still looking for somebody to wear the corduroy and the bear costume. <laughs> just not for the whole time, but. Maybe for like a 15 minutes here and there. Well, is that a requirement to do the book fair? No, but we advertised it. Oh. And there has been volunteers to date. <laughs> and I guess the costume, like uh, one of the parents, one of the dads was going to wear it, but he's too big. It's, oh, I think five. So I'm five eight. I, think. <laughs> I was going to suggest Darn. Was tired, but if it doesn't fit, that's it was bad. a height thing. I think five eight. You have to be I, think a, I think it would be perfect for a, a, a lady to kid? get in it. I think a lady could be using it, too. Well, well, I don't you don't care. Do you want to be corduroy in there? I'm not 5'8". <laughs> 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 <You're five laughs> if you're under it, that's good. Uh, okay, we'll put out a plea to the community yes. if there's anybody that would like to practice their acting skills. There's no, there's no talking involved. Yeah, you yeah. just have to walk around and be Maybe friendly. Get some photos and shake hands. That's cool. Yeah. I need to come up with
okay, thank you. That's it. Yep, that's yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. So the only other thing that we wanted to share with you is um, this went into the annual report for the town. Mm -hmm. And this year, um, when I, I have met several times with the town administrators, the four town administrators, and what they asked for, and of course they've also asked you, Katie, because you were here, saying they want to understand a little bit more about the school, they mm -hmm. want more information about what we do. And uh, I asked all the principals if they would sit down and really write a nice narrative about their buildings. And Pete wrote, he did a great job. He wrote, um, it's small because of course the book is small. When, when I first got it, it was quite large. And Pete actually has copies of it in a very large form. You mean form. the font? The font oh. is small <laughs> because of course the They're trying to minimize the pages. Yes, and yes. But you can see the items he's, he's talking about. Um, not only the school choice, but the preschool, which is, is mm -hmm. phenomenal. That is something that the, the district is, should be so proud of. It's, and, and the people in the program are the ones that are making it mm -hmm. a success. The um, curriculum initiatives, um, we're doing a lot with science. And uh, Waitley Elementary School hosts the science camp in the summer, which was phenomenally successful again mm -hmm. last summer. Uh, the PD assessment, math, literacy, technology, and the social studies. And that's all very interesting. I think parents and taxpayers, they, you know, they really, if they really are interested in what's happening in the school, this really tells the picture. There's also a piece about our um, special education task force, um, our students with disabilities and uh, what's going on in this building with our, um, our low percentage of uh, special ed numbers, and it's certainly due to the collaborative and targeted interventions. The school faculty works as one system. They're doing a beautiful job here. Social and emotional learning is a very important thing. You, it's, in order to get yourself uh, re-licensed as a teacher, you have to have some social and emotional learning um, to understand the whole child, not just the uh, not just the academics. Community outreach is a um, is is a very big piece of what happens in this building. The global leaders. Make mm -hmm. a picture. Also, yeah, yeah, that was the bears. Nice <laughs> picture. The bears that were made. <laughs> Third grade made bears. For <laughs> yes, Maureen's cool. in there. Yeah, nice. And uh, they did a beautiful job. And they those bears went to let's see, um, let's see group. Uh, the yeah, they, they, the bears went to the homeless shelter where someone works. Do you yeah, know Steve Huntley. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they're, that would be they'll be doing another counts. project. They're going to make, be making those taggy blankets, baby blankets with the tags for the texture, and they're going to make those to so make the babies. So that would be Valley Opportunity Council, then, if that's Steve Huntley's. Yeah, that first yeah. one was. Yeah. So that's where... Um, a lot of growth and a lot of um, <coughs> development, you know, character building comes into place. That's great. And I also, again, have to point out Lois Lively with the sewing. Mm -hmm. She's just bringing that to the school. And, of course, the teacher she's with this year is, is all for it. They're working on a quilt. So they're doing exciting things. But uh, also, um, you can see where the this, this global leader group, they're doing... Um, you know, a lot of other things. So that's a big deal, and I'm hoping that people in the community can see how these students in this school are reaching out. Um, art, music, band, and string, very important part of, again, the whole child, developing that whole sense of completeness, not just the academics and uh, physical education and health. Again, very important. Pete just about covered everything. Safety initiatives. Uh, and then you can see over here the um, painting with pastries, which was so successful <laughs> and just a blast. And um, I, I don't, uh, there are kids like six years old to Paris, and every picture came out beautifully. Yeah, that's, the woman who did it was her first time doing that. She used to be a kindergarten teacher for years, <laughs> and she's very artistic. And um, I know her, so I asked her to. Uh, if she was interested in doing this. She did a great job. So successful. Mm -hmm. Parents were there. I was amazed at the amount of school employees that were that were there. <coughs> and what really 
amazed me was even if you were this big, your picture was just as beautiful <laughs> as as the teachers. Yeah, she did it step by step. Cookies and canvases, oh. they did it the same way. And uh, the, the pastries, the, 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 the snacks were phenomenal. I was, you know, the homemade. You could eat your picture. I know. Well, <laughs> so anyway, and then, um, then we asked, also we have many directors that came together to work on the, the budget in, um, you know, in Waitley. So we all sat at the table. So the Office of Special Ed, uh, special ed director, mm -hmm. um, curriculum director with the she wrote the curriculum initiatives. Early childhood, all contributed. Yeah. Early childhood did the preschool. The office of technology was our director of technology, uh, but we all sat together in facilities and we all talked about what it's going to take to build this budget and what's what's everyone's vision for this school and and what does you know how can we is technology more important than the roof or the rug or and, and just to help everyone come together at the table do we need books versus computers I don't know and then of course um, we want to thank everyone and uh, I think this was just an excellent report it's just about I feel comfortable that that's great people will really appreciate that it. Pete um, did a beautiful job uh, Louise Law Kim McCarthy uh, Karen Ferrandino Scott Paul uh, the only one we didn't put in there was building because we talk about that all the time. We don't make anyone nervous. <laughs> no, just kidding. So this is pa uh, Patty's piece, the annual report. And okay. so Patty develops all these numbers and this information that also goes into uh, the information our taxpayers <coughs> and stakeholders will see. And you can um, see about who's working at the central office and then What's our enrollment? What are the raises going on? What's happening next year? And what are some of the costs involved? Uh, because we do know that the cost of the people, the human resources of the building is where the money pretty much goes. Done in that way. That puts a lot of this information together, too. Yeah, well. she does. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, she gets right on it and makes sure it keeps us going, because I gave a deadline to to my team, and then that gave me a week to process it, and then it went right out. So, um, budget-related expenditures, and then our most current enrollment. So, that is the piece, apparent, well, it's actually, again, written by Pete and the team, but that's my superintendent's report. So, thank you. Right. Yeah, I think that's really awesome. And uh, again, nice job. A lot of work. It sounds like I, a lot well, of work. you know, putting it together, I gave some um, examples um, where I came from in my my training in my old district. We did this mm -hmm. with every school and every department, and then we kind of put everything together. But um, a lot of this work was done by them. Mine, of course, we will see in the numbers, but uh, the team did a great job. And so the town report is for by calendar year, is that right? So this goes yeah. into the calendar year. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Or is it a fiscal town year? Report. Town report. Yeah. It's it goes well, right into town report, yeah. right? It's the last fiscal year. So this though. is for the, that's, it's for 17. Set, yeah. For calendar 17? Or fiscal. Fiscal. fiscal yeah, season. December 31, 2017. Oh. And that's, that's calendar. Yes, right. calendar. I thought the town report was based on fiscal because it was fiscal year. Fiscal so year. when we go to this year's town meeting, this will be the fiscal 2017 17. book. Because right. we're in 2018 and we're planning for two year and behind. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've got to give a report. We had this discussion. We had quite a discussion so. about that. It's very confusing. Yeah. Remember we went around and around, but. I right. live in three years. I never You're know right. where I am. <laughs> uh, you're right, but we we did go around and around because I think you have it got kind yeah, of yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> after a while. Okay. So thank you for listening. That's great. I love all this data. Okay, so in a report we've done. Miss, any questions or anything? Um, Chair, I just wanted to thank everybody for changing the meeting. The 12th, so we're confirmed for our March 12th meeting.
some reason I thought it was this one. And I, I, I knew, I saw the paperwork, the same day. I printed everything last week, printed that, and I went ahead and go look at it again today. Today's the fifth, so it must be next month. I'm still thinking about Sunderland, which is tomorrow night, but changed to Monday night. So <laughs> what that's the 12th. Would have been tomorrow yeah, night, but now it's Monday night, day by day. So you're March 12th next month. Right? March 12th, we're okay. next month. Thank you. Which is Monday. It's just the next month. We'll see each other on February 27th. <laughs> right. We get to get together before next week. Okay. Any update from the collaborative? Um, we had a meeting the other night. Um, this woman from Spiffy was there. She gave a it's um, strategic planning initiative for families and youth coalition. I think they look at risk and prevention of different things. But um, they had done a survey. I think they were with high school kids. She did a really nice um, um, talk, but and a little bit about bullying, but it was mostly about vaping and e-cigarettes, mm -hmm. which I know nothing about. And um, she had even had materials to pass around. And there's some kind of um, conference on February 12th at Amherst Regional High School, Vaping Prevention and School Policy. Um, it, they're showing you that vaping and e-cigarettes are just as dangerous as smoking. Yeah. Um, they, they, they can do something to your lungs. Um, yeah, they're marketing it. They say they're not marketing it to kids, but, but then it's they have all the flavors like, are like flavors bubble gum. Right? Yeah, cotton candy and just and I was smells. behind somebody at work today that let off like a, a puff of smoke. I was like, what the heck is that smell? And then he tells me some herbal tea, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I, I couldn't, but it was like a big cloud of smoke. Hmm. I mean, it was like one so puff. Was of, it an e-cigarette? No, he had a... He's a vapor. That's he has like a, a vapor. vapor. He had a vapor, yeah. whatever, this big, like a bond, you know, yeah. well, miniature had... <laughs> something. It just, it just like it a big like puff. They look like pens. They even designed but them it's big. It's like attractive to glass. Right. And... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, I think they're expensive, too. I think some of them are. Mm -hmm. um, they're, and she was saying they have all flavors, and there's some kind of a popcorn flavor that has the same material. They make popcorn, and I think people work in these popcorn factories are getting something called popcorn lung. Yeah. And you can get it from mm -hmm. the same stuff they're putting in the, wow. in the uh, vaping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, I anyway, think saying elementary schools need to be preparing for this? Um, well, middle, I think middle and high school. Yeah, yeah. middle and high school, but um, hope it's not here. there was, you know, finance report. The executive director's report. They went over some other. Are they still looking for a new place to? They are. That didn't. We didn't talk about that at all. Um, There's some talk about a nursing home, a, an old Northampton nursing. Yeah, home. they looked at that one. I don't know, is that Damon Road? Um, but they're they're not finished looking <coughs> at all their options. <coughs> yeah, where they are, it's pretty. I haven't been there yet. Oh, where's the mm -hmm. meeting? Um, at the transportation building in Greenfield, oh, nice. and one was at GCC. Mm -hmm. That's all I've been to. But there are supposed to be some there too, so maybe the next one will be there. Thank and that's, you. That's pretty much. I I just have one thing. Uh, is it is it this week we're setting out? RFPs, is it? No. We have uh, worked with Brian to uh, wait until vacation week, which is uh, the week after next. Right now, it just got right in the middle of, of the budget season. And with Patty preparing five budgets and then presenting them to the school committee's <coughs> deliberating and then preparing to go to town halls, we asked if we could um, postpone it until February 19th. Well, 19th is the holiday, the 20th. So right now, um, today is the 5th, so it'll be two weeks. Okay. What, what are the RFPs for? The, for school. the blue school, school building. The blue school in the town oh. land. But Brian and I did discuss the ads, um, the legal ads, and um, I asked him if he would mind if I just had to ensure that the ads appear side by side, that we send them to the newspapers that way, 
will incur the cost of the ad and just bill the town for their half instead of you know hoping that he'll send his and I'll send and mine right and next to they'll be next to each other. So I'm going to do one ad that has both of them, both the postings. Get that in the paper. I and saw a friend the other night, and he asked me. I said, well, as far as I know, we're we're on go, but I didn't. That's why I just ask and see where we were. That's the latest. If yeah. we can, if we can sneak, if we can squeak it out before we work. That's right. They're they're ready, right? We've got Brian's stuff. Okay. We've got to work on a couple of um, editing issues on ours, and we should be go, able to go. And I I think we that's our dead that's our drop dead time. I think we might get it out a little bit. We'll be able to get out a little earlier. We'll still be all right for. Mm -hmm. He said day. he's fine yeah. with that because he's still fine for town meeting. Yeah. So. What, um, did we agree to move the field? We're, we're trying to find out first what's going on okay. here, but I mean, I, I, you know, unless Pete wants to say something different, I, I would say it's a perfect spot out there. But there again, there's there's going to be there's going we're going to get some flack from some people, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. That that's that's my understanding, but I mean, and it'll probably come up. At at town meeting as well because the ten thousand dollars that is put aside to improve the field at the blue school will now have to go to yeah, help develop the field wherever it may end up. up. And I, I can't imagine, you know, I don't know what the prices are, but I can't imagine spending all ten thousand dollars on a, on a new field for for we'll say first to third graders. Mm -hmm. If that's, uh, I'll, we'll say, a softball field for first to third graders, yeah, they, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't have any decision yeah. making, I guess, you know, and I have never developed a softball field myself. I mean, I just gave you <laughs> feedback on what my community yeah. thought about it, yeah. and certainly that wasn't, wasn't negative. I was just trying to find out, first of all, how, how this all goes first and see if we get any replies on it, and then we could probably go our next step would be to talk about Finalize it. Finalize this. Well, so talk hard. about it at town meeting. So if people have want to talk about it, then we we can talk about it at town meeting, I, I suppose. And that's the Waitley side. If you think of the Frontier side, we have to figure out how the heck we're going to get all those files out of there. We'll get them out of there. We will. Well, Lynn and I met with someone, and it, it can be done. It's going to be expensive, but it can be done. I guess my question around that topic would simply be if the feedback that, that this community provided, did that go into the hands of the right people? I mean, I'm not sure who who's who's receiving that feedback from who us. Who gets to make the decision? I, as far as I know, we do. The school committee? Yeah. Oh. I, I'm going to say we do. Oh, and I thought it was a select committee. Well, my understanding is there's other options in the mix, okay. and I'm, so I think they need to evaluate all the different options. I think I can make sure that we pass along the feedback yeah. that you gave us last a few meetings ago yeah. to the select board. Would you still sure. have it? I mean, I'll give it to you in writing. Or I, I can ask you maybe if I don't, if I can't find yeah. it, I'll reach out yeah. to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, we took the time to do it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I think sure it's definitely the right that. Yeah, there were some good points for us. Yeah. So I'll make sure to pass that along. To Brian and the school committee. And you know, especially, and especially, especially if this field is shrinking because of other activities, the main thing is not to take over one like here, but if we could add another. Well, another keep in mind, we wouldn't want it on this field. Right, I know, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> but we're adding more things over here, so mm -hmm. if we have a piece of land that we somewhat use for, we'll say soccer. Do we use a soccer no. over here at all? No. We don't no. use a soccer. There was soccer soccer soccer. I'm going to say school. soccer. I mean, when I say soccer. They had soccer mm -hmm. practice over there. Was, there was a couple of practices yeah. out there with okay. some small nets over the past couple of years. But, okay. but really, it only gets used for PE right now as far as the school is concerned. But I don't think the rec league uses it on a regular basis. I think a couple of years ago, um, in fact, I think Jonathan dropped off a couple of small goals. Mm -hmm. And there may have been some practices conducted here, but they don't do games here to the best of my knowledge. Okay, well, I'll make sure that um, I'll, I'll find out what the schedule is. Right? Okay. But it's, we'll find out the feedback on the purchases right. in the meantime. Okay. Um, then do you have a report as well? Or? No, um, I took, um, I talked about the report. report. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, so last thing is the budget. Daddy, thanks for staying. We would have done it early. I know you like to 
to your stuff. And yeah. Take a no, minute. It's a perfect. It's a perfect I mean, timing to, to do to do it at the end. So whether it takes five minutes or an hour or whatever, I mean, it's yeah. it's a wow. Well, <laughs> I'm just. I'm just so the budget narrative, um, the, the, the FY19 budget is in the amount of 1 million, this is on page 1 of 28, $1,673,415. There's an increase this year of $33,159, or 2.02%. 2 this amount reflects the amount re required from the town appropriation. The additional $444,951 will be funded by other grant and revolving account sources. This brings the total operating budget of the Waitley Elementary School to $2,118,366 in fiscal year 2019. And, um, if you look, if you go through up to page 4 out of 28, you'll see some, um, some pie charts that actually show how, it's just an overview of the budget and how the proposed um, expenditures are uh, going in the budget divvied up. So you'll see 69% of the budget of the uh, Waitley Elementary School is used for instruction for our kids, direct instruction. Um, facilities and operations, that's 11%. Administration, uh, that is your central office administration, your building level administration, clerical, and um, business operations and all that, that's 14%. And other student services, which includes transportation, health, and lunch, lunch services. So that's the expenditures. The over the the thirty thousand foot view of the revenue sources is seventy nine percent from town appropriation. Sixteen percent of our budget comes our operating budget comes from school choice. Four percent from early childhood revolving, and then the SPED grant brings in one percent. And if you turn the page, you can see a little closer, a little deeper, and before we get into the actual numbers, a little deeper, administration, which is 14% of the overall budget, that's broken up into a building-based leadership and clerical services, that's 57%, human resources and benefits, and those are, uh, we'll go through them, but they're pretty much insurance and uh, things of that nature. School committee and legal services, 2%. Uh, superintendent uh, business and finance offices, that is 19%. And district-wide information management and technology, that's our district, um, the uh, district uh, information uh, technology director and his staff. And so that, that's 14% of the budget. When we look at instruction, which is 69% of the budget, you can see teachers take up 63% of the 69. Uh, guidance, psychologist, therapeutic, that's 12%. Library is 5%. Uh, supplies, equipment, and materials is 5%. Curriculum, special ed, and early childhood directors. We have a curriculum uh, director, special ed director, and early childhood, Kim, and. That's 5%, and then your instructional assistance, that's 10%. When you look at facilities and operation, that's 11% of the whole picture, that's just a small piece. But your custodian services are 33% of 11%. Our utility and heating services are 28%. Uh, maintenance of buildings, grounds, and equipment, that's 33%. And networking and communications, that's 6%. And then again, when you look at other student services, that's just a very small piece. It's only 6%. But it, the transportation services take up 43%. Uh, medical and health services, 37%. And then our food services, uh, 20%. So that's just the overview, and Patty's going to go um, into the deeper, you know, the numbers so we can really go through them. 
school is great. Can I just ask one question on the charts, which sure. I love? They're oh, okay. really helpful to have sort of these broken out. Did you look at them compared to other schools at all? Or? You know, just to get a sense of yeah, kind of how we fall did. compared to other I spent elementary all schools. weekend working because there's five well, sets. Right. And I would say to you they are pretty much um, pretty much the same. Uh, your budget is two million. Um, Deerfield's more like I I can't think of the number, but mm -hmm. portion proportion when you look yeah when you percentage look at this, wise percentage wise yeah it's about the same. They're similar. Proportion. Administration is a, you know each is a small piece. The money mm -hmm. we spend the most on is instruction, right. and when we look at instruction, when we dig into that, it's the teachers, it's the human resources, the salary, and then the uh, facilities and operations. You know, um, and this is our custodian and our maintenance. They're all pretty much the same proportion. Mm -hmm. And then the food services. I think our food services here is like four thousand dollars, but four thousand dollars is twenty percent of six percent. It's just that you know that's. I just couldn't fit it in anywhere to make it really work. But yeah, I would say to you, they're all pretty similar. We're spending the money in the same places at the school. At yeah. the schools. Uh, uh -huh. Good or bad, depending on what it's okay. be expected, I guess. So if you look at page six, um, continuing on the budget, page six of 28, is our staff, um, student staff and data sheet. And what we added on here was our district mission statement and our district vision statement as well. Um, on the left is our number of students, and we've frozen the 18 at October 1st because that is for which we are funded. But I have um, adjusted the projected for 2019 based on um, the latest enrollment projected, our, our latest enrollment report. So right now, um, as Pete had previously told you, we have nine um, resident enrollees into the kindergarten. Uh, but we also have five school choice applications. So right now we're looking at 118 students. Um, on the right is our staff members, and um, we had 31.5 at, at, during budget season, uh, and currently we have 30.6, so we're down almost one person. <laughs> Um, and what we did there was our, our Spanish teacher had to be, be increased 0.2 because of the ELL population that came in. We had two vacant instructional assistants, so Pete combined them and hired a SPED teacher. Um, and he has reduced his custodians from a, a, from a 0.5 to a 0.4. I mean, yeah, well, from a 0.6 to a 0.5. So we're uh, down 0.9. And then um, the teacher credentials, as we, as we have seen before. On page 7 of 28, this is the, the summary of uh, the town appropriation. <coughs> and it's changed from your last <coughs> viewing. Um, when we looked at the budget, we were at 3.66% increase. And now we are down to 2.02% increase. And how we got there was um, a couple of things. Um, Pete had um, suggested that we take our part time uh, food service worker and take that salary off the budget and put it back into the food service revolving account since we were, are picking up the cost of the cafeteria manager in the general ledger budget. And I took a look at the ledgers uh, from the town, and I, I, think it's a good, I think it's a good idea, and um, it, it should be able to handle it. So we, we did that. Um, so where did that come out of? Um, mm -hmm. it, the, that would have come out of... Um, or is it an addition? It's this bottom line here? Yeah. No. It would have been under... It would have been on page 14 under food services, other salaries. It's part of that 10,782, uh, the 7844, that's the salary. That is the projected salary for that person. So changing that to the other funds changed it from the 3.66% to the 2.02? Well, one no, I'm, oh, a couple okay. other changes. Okay. Um, um, 
you had asked at the last meeting to talk to our early childhood to see if they could take a um, uh, an IA f uh, um, and put that on the revolving because we had already increased the teaching position by 10 um, and we wanted to add another 24 another aid to, to that 24,759 and um, she was a little leery about that because we are in our first year uh, and on, on page 3 of 28, um, I, writ, I wrote, um, sh our early director, uh, early childhood director cautions us to be cautious of relying too heavily on these funds since we've only had one year experience in the full-time program. She's unsure if keeping the cost of an, instruct of an instructional assistant in the budget is sustainable. Um, and she says that because um, right now, because because of the makeup of the class, we should only we, our average should be 15. We, we were up to 18. Mm -hmm. Next year we may not be able to go up to 18. Mm -hmm. um, we also, we you have to remember we have a sliding scale. Next year we might have parents who qualify for sliding scale. Mm -hmm. We already do know that we have two children who will be tuition free because they will be coming with. Uh, from reach with services required so she say and then we had the one time you know we think a one time money of the private school that closed their preschool and 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 tuitioned in their kids to us mm -hmm. that may not happen again mm -hmm. so uh, she said for this year um, it w it would be possible but she doesn't know if it's if, if, if it will continue to be um, and if you look on page 27, we're still leaving her a balance, a projected ending balance of 22,182 with, with the instructional assistant there. So there's, that's excess money that would be left at, at the end of the year. Right. What page? 27, 27 or 28. And it was what item? That adding the instructional assistant for twenty-four thousand two fifty-nine in FY nineteen. <coughs> so, so are we? We are taking the money from that this year. We're going to take budget. the IA that works in the early childhood and pay it from the early childhood revolving account. Okay. But she's cautioning us that we may not be able to do it next year. Okay. So we may need to take it back. So the two kids that. Are part of the beach program? Are they kids that live in our town? They yes. Okay. They have That's to. Why, be. Yeah. Does that money come when when kids need services in preschool? Does we money, provide it? So we don't get money from somewhere else. We no. okay. That has come out of our budget. Okay. We're, we're we're responsible for any child that has an IEP. We're responsible from two years nine months up to the age of twenty two. Once they turn 2.9, they're ours. Okay. If they live in Waitley, and we don't, we don't take special ed students in the pre-K from other towns. We tell them they have to go there because we can't incur costs for spend. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just trying to see if there's uh, anything else. Um, so everything else is basically the same except that um, building heat. I thought we could take ten thousand dollars, and I'm I'm drawing back on that a little bit because um, I was. And once we start talking about the, the one thing I miss about being in a working in a city who has their own gas and electric is I didn't have to worry about that. Um, <laughs> But our building heat, um, I reduced it based on the actual cost we spent in the previous two years. However, we are contracted at 0.545 per therm only through October. Um, and at this time of year, gas prices tend to fluctuate depending on the weather. So we'll be looking in the spring to lock in a new rate, but I can guarantee you it's going to be higher than 54 and a half cents per therm. So I didn't want to cut too much out of there. So with those changes, um, it means that we will be asking the town for an additional 33,000, 
$159 or 2.02%. And um, on pages 1 through 3, I've provided you with um, with the explanation of what these numbers are. So, And we went through them um, before. No, it, caught, it caught me because usually we... Usually mm -hmm. page seven is usually mm -hmm. the first page or the second page we open to. Right. Wow, new format. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I could probably work Change with this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our I like the I like this. Yeah, the but you know, but they're here again explaining. So this, explaining. this increase of two percent. I mean, when we went to that finance committee, we yeah. were hoping not to over two, two and, and a half. half. I know. So, so I wonder if we shouldn't put some of the early, early childhood back to maximize it. <laughs> well, there's two pieces. There's the 10,000 that you yeah. took out originally in the 24, right? Depends what the 10,000 was. What's the 10,000 for again? For one Increase the, the uh, teacher salary. Yeah. It's 0.61. Because it, it used to come out of another place. Well, we were taking uh, t uh, 10 out, and now we were going to take 20 out. So if I took out her, that ten thousand, we'd be at two point six three. Yeah. <laughs> we may need that extra. Do you want six. it at two five? Well, um, I don't know. I mean, I I feel like we might as well maximize what we can from the town because um, we may need more. We there. need to have backup in other places for the future. And I'd hate to drain that early childhood too much. I mean, I, my theory is always this doesn't hurt to ask. They could give us two and a half and say, you know, I want to be mindful of the town, but I also want to make sure we're getting what we can to do the best for the school. Maybe we don't want to take a hole. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> they can say no. Just remember what we're doing with school choice. Right, right. I, I know the school choice is really weighing on this. And we're spending. You're spending ahead. Ahead. Right. Ahead, ahead. When right. we looked today, we were left um, with a negative balance of one thirty, one hundred thirty-one thousand four hundred sixty-five. If I leave the electricity out and not make any reductions to our electricity budget or the heating budget, either one, we're at. 2.51%. That's only adding 2,000 there? Eight. Yeah. Eight. 8,000. Where did you add it back? To the I, uh, the, uh, either the electricity or the heat. Because I was going to decrease Oh, if both. you take them out. I see. Right. If I, take that, if I take that out, we'll be at 2.51%. Well, I don't, maybe can we go through the rest of the budget and see what's happening with them? I mean, I like the idea of lowering the heating and electricity and based on usage and based on savings we've invested in, mm -hmm. because I think that's what we want to be showing. Um, I think the challenge is making sure we have enough money to pay for all the staffing going forward. Exactly. So it's it, so I'm just. Am I understanding that it's hard for you to um, split a sum on salary between two funds? Is that part of it? Right. Well, I he see. just said to me, "What if you took out the cafeteria? If I take out the cafeteria, mm -hmm. we're at two point five. Mm -hmm. So the revol cafeteria revolving fund. That's money that we collect for the food for the right. Meals. And it will be. And it will. It will be in the negative because of the fact that um, what, one of the the. The problem that we um, encounter is that we don't have uh, our statistically with all, we should only have one person in the kitchen. We can't run a kitchen with one right. person, so we're always going to have an excess of a, of a half of a person. Mm -hmm. So the good news in that area is that our lunch counts are increasing regularly. Every month is looking better. Our Meals served per hour's work is getting better all the time. Okay. Um, but we did have both of those positions in the budget. That was one of the things, as you can see from page one. 
um, that we, besides the reduction in hours that we did, the other thing is we took that part-time position and took it out of the budget and put it back into the school lunch budget, knowing that it's going to, you know, Knowing that it would go over though? That. That's not what's going to make it go over. It's probably going to go over anyway. That would uh -huh. maybe go over a little more. Um, but we're getting closer to, you know, we're reduced. It's getting better. It's working in general, better. I, right. say. I wouldn't hurt maybe and to have a, a report for you in the next couple of months yeah. you know, on how that's working. But if we put that back in the budget, as Patty said, it's <coughs> like two and a half percent that you're looking at. Is it too early to tell if, um, with that new computer system, if people are? You're collecting more yeah, money. Yeah, you collecting more money. From I have more in there. I, I, I have not had a chance to analyze any mm -hmm. of that data. Yeah, our numbers aren't bad. We're, we're across the district. When I speak to Mary Delusa, who's doing this, we're you know, relative to other schools, we're, we don't have a lot of outstanding. Uh, you know, there are some. There's always going to be a little bit of outstanding money month to month. But mm -hmm. we're, we're you know we're addressing that. We're sending emails every two weeks to parents who, you know, who have a, a balance, and. Um, uh, you know, it, the numbers are absolutely looking better. I, it's not my budget to present to you, but yeah. uh, I'm sure that um, that the food service director would be happy to talk to you at a you know, future meeting about mm -hmm. we're, we're definitely going in the right direction. But you know, we're hoping in April. Uh, didn't we say that today, Dr. Kerry, that she would come to the April joint meeting, oh, and, okay. and we'll have everyone. Oh, that's a good idea. We'll have everybody's. Each, you'll get to meet her, and then we'll have everybody's numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably through March. No, I'm not going to say March. I'm going to say definitely through February. <laughs> yeah, don't commit to anything. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, well, I like the idea of putting the cafeteria back in and fully funding those staff because they're really important to running the cafeteria. And if it goes over in the cafeteria revolving, we would just be taking it out of school choice anyway. Or our right. general fund if we had the extra. So I don't want to be taking it out of school choice. I'd rather be trying to get it in the, keep it in our regular budget. But we're, we're not moving it to school choice, keep that in mind. Yeah. We're moving it to their budget. Yeah, their budget. No, I know, but yeah. when that budget goes over. As Patty said, it could come out of our general fund if we had excess If we had excess money, money, but if we don't, right. we seem to be right. hitting the school choice sometimes. And understand that in the past few years when we've had a little excess money, it's been in the electricity and in the heat. Right, so but that needs to come, and, but in order to make our budgets come down, we need, we need to right size those numbers. So we're really running tight. There is no excess mm -hmm. in this budget. Right. Right. Well, that's the point we need to make to the town. Right. So we aren't. We don't have a lot of excess in the budget. That we're spending the money for on important things, and that we don't have any other pockets right now to reach to. So. Right. Because we're maxing out our school choice. Right. And there's no cushion anywhere. It's That's why I want to get more school choice money to make it add a few more. Give us a little more cushion if we can. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the only way that mm -hmm. get it's, it's I mean, I'm, I'm looking at what's happened over the last few years. It's going to get caught. We're going to get one of these years, we're going to get caught. I mean, we're going to get caught where I, I would say keep the two two point two this year and don't go to two and a half because they're gonna be there's gonna be a year coming up that we're gonna be looking for more that's just my personal from the town? Yeah, more money. Instead of two percent it could we could have a budget of four percent or five percent. Well maybe that's part of our discussion I mean, with the finance committee is where do they want us to be paying for things from their perspective. Right. I, I'm just, you know, I don't want to lose any staff, right? Because we have a high budget. Because when they say, well, you can't have a four or five percent budget, the first thing that we start cutting is is staff members in most cases, and I don't want to cut anybody. I mean, it's, I it's, that's why we have school. Anybody. That's why we have school choice coming here. But we have the great programs and great teachers right. and assistants here. But as Patty just said. We're, we're one and a half on school choice already. We're not spending last year's or next year's. No, we're, we're and we 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 got to stop it sometime. I mean, but I guess that's why I'm thinking we need to push more to the town to say that so the town understands how much it costs to run the school, and not rely so much on the school choice. I mean, I'm just saying two and a half. They they said two and a half was what they were right. willing to bear. So. 
Maybe Let's we, try maybe and bear get, that for the time being. Cause maybe, that, maybe we need to tell the finance committee what's... I think we need them to understand the dynamics yeah, here, yeah. which is unless we can continue to have a strong school choice stream, the school will not be able to right. pay for itself. I mean, that's the reality. For you, for years, they always thought, oh, you guys got to spend your school choice money. Well, well we have now. <laughs> We're, spe so, we're spending it. Which is great. Like, luckily we have that. Otherwise, we'd be in really bad shape. It's almost right? like robbing from Peter to get the Paul. But we're to still try in to... decent shape. The key is to keep it going, yeah, I exactly. think. Like, it's not. Yep. Now is not the time to cut, but we do need to be mindful of what could be coming up ahead if we get to a point where the school choice were to drop off considerably or, you know, we no, should I just be thinking about what it means if it just stays steady. Mm -hmm. even. I don't think it's going to fall off too much. I mean, if you look at the projections, it's, it's hard to know, I guess. Okay. I think the preschool is, is going the to go The preschool is a good feeder, yeah. and it's going to be, in a few years, we'll have a better feel for if that's really providing mm -hmm. a lot of feeding, which would be great. That would be a really great revenue source for us to continue to shine into. And we seem to consistently get choice kids from certain air, certain town yeah, up north. that are having tough times. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we also get school choice people that come and go, and I'm mindful that we, you know, school. Some school choice people are very savvy, and we want the savvy ones to want to be here. And I think word of mouth in the school choice world is very important. So, mm -hmm. keeping that good reputation and keeping all the services and the smallish class size. I, 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 I should I should have printed these out, and I apologize, but. Um, for last year, we had 41 school choice bodies. They didn't all stay, so we had FTEs of 3858. Okay. So we received 30,849 in spend increment and 223,749 in tuition for a total of 254,598. The majority of those students, 19 of them, came from Gil Montague. Mm -hmm. um, our December projection for this year there's 43 students a sped increment of 19,582 which we know will go up um, and tuition of 215 for 234 uh, total of 234 582 but we know that, that we have two school choice kids that are going to the wings program so that number will increase um, so of the 43 kids again 20 of them coming from Gail Montague half almost half yeah and then we've got one from Chesterfield, three from Deerfield, six from Greenfield, three from Hatfield, one from New Salem, Wendell. Is that one town or is that two? Wendell's one and Salem's towns. one. Yeah. It might district. be one school district. Though. Okay. It's two towns. Northampton is three, Orange one, Pioneer two, Savoy one, and Springfield two. Mm -hmm. Springfield. So it's smattering. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of everything. Yeah. How does the kids get here? Parents must live around, must oh. work around here. Must be worth it for all, them to come all the way. All school choice kids are brought here by their families. Yeah. So there's no transportation. I think the mom works in West Springfield. Mm. I don't know where that works. Wow. And school choice out, just so you know, um, it's pretty, we had 11 go out in, in last year, FTEs of 7.77. .77. And this year, preliminarily, we have 11. And where they're going, two are at Conway, three are at Deerfield, five are at Hatfield, and one is in Northampton. So we're paying Conway and Deerfield? Yeah. Well, the town is. Right. Yeah. And you've got one charter student at the uh, Hilltown Cooperative. Mm -hmm. These are all elementary school members. This would be, right. Yeah. That, that child's in grade one. And that's not $5,000. No, I know. It, 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 it's 20281 Where's that? Uh, where is the Hilltown Cooperative? It's in Williamsburg. I have no idea. It's, in, it's just in Williamsburg. So mm -hmm. we want them to come here. Okay. So I don't know. I, how do we decide what to do with the. Do you have anything I mean, I feel like we need to talk to the Finance Committee. Yeah. But I'd like to present two and a half to the Finance Committee. That's what they asked for. Sure. Let's give it to them. Yeah, take the and, cafeteria, you know, take the And put the cafeteria yeah. back in, that way we're fully funding our cafeteria. We know we're going to have a loss there that we're going to have to cover anyway. anyway, so let's not make that any worse than it has to be. Do you think you need to make a motion for that? To 
No, I don't think so. I'm just doing it right now. <laughs> this is just feedback on the draft, right? Right. It's We're not passing any budget yet. This right. is no. still okay. preliminary. We pass it next month. Right. I keep I I keep track of the versions. So yeah, I like that's helpful. What we changed and when we changed it. How many versions do we usually go through? Two or three. Two or three. Yeah. Um, two now. This will be three. So this will. Um, I'm gonna have to review with them. Yeah. So the the, the, the I, my thought would be to present the latest version to the finance committee, talk it through with them. Get any feedback they might have. On the 27, you said? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the 27. Okay. present that. You're going to have these all be printed exactly what you have right here again? I just fixed it, okay. so I just have to redo it. So, what I'll do is I will send, um, so now uh, our net change would be uh, asking for $41,003 or 2.5%. And I will send this out to Brian tomorrow. Can we go through the school choice? piece of this in the back and you it looks like you added the um, on the page 26 and 27 yep so or the, do you want to do something first or was there something else no, you wanted to go no, over no no i just i wanted you to uh, that would i'm just or i don't know if we need to put any more on the operating line by line it actually starts on page 17 where you no, I think she wanted. Oh, I'm, look, I'm interested in these oh, okay. last few accounts no, no, where we're I'm so into we the dip into other monies. I'm sorry, I'm so the, into the, the total budget or just the school choice fund? Um, yeah, she means that. Page school 26. choice fund. 27. So the total budget is page 25, right? Right. So, so I think this is interesting, the finance committee, to see where we're paying 25 seeing where all the money is coming from. And Lynn did a nice chart on And that. that's what that yeah, chart right. is. So that's helpful to see. But this doesn't have, for example, the cafeteria we're helping fund. No. And it, it will next year. Because one of the things, after we get through with this budget season, Mary and I are going to sit down and we're going to create budgets for each of the cafeterias. It's never been done, mm -hmm. so we're going to Excellent. do it. Do it, and, and unfortunately, we just did not have time to do it for this budget season. But it, there will be a budget for each of the cafeterias in the five schools to operate from. So then we can track that in addition here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the EC revolving, I noticed that it says the school committee sets the tuition rates. Is that on the little flyer that goes out? Is that us or is that someone <laughs> other school? <laughs> well, we, if we were making changes, we would bring that to you. But I don't, I don't know. We've ever seen the rates. Mm -hmm. Early childhood. Yeah. Early childhood. Yeah. I, I, I can't really speak to that. I don't know who sets it. I, I, I don't think Kim sets it, but we should either fix the flyer or no. I don't. I think it it it, it, we're, it is it is whatever the last time you guys voted it was which was probably a while ago yeah so i wouldn't mind looking at those and seeing if there's any room there also the tuition not that no one ever wants to raise prices but if they haven't been raised in a long time i think we did raise them didn't we raise them recently i think they did i think they raised them um, when we decided to go full day mm -hmm. i think we, they, uh, we changed the rates for the full day yeah. we extrapolated so them. Yeah. usually based on an hourly rate or right mm -hmm. So maybe maybe you could just report out to us what the rates are now, okay. and then if there's a process that we're supposed to be, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. here it says this is the thing that gets sent out. Tuition established by the school committee. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to. Well, it changed last year. Didn't I don't remember ever seeing. It. That's so they'd call you up and not us. Right. <laughs> I know. I'm fine if, they, if we get to do that. But I do think I'd also like to make sure we're, because if there's a sliding scale, that means people that can't afford it can always get a lower rate. It's set by the state. The we sliding use, scale. The, yeah, we use uh, the early childhood. They give it to us. They tell us what to use. So then what is the regular rate set at? Is that, that's the regular rate is set by the state? No. No. The, the sliding scale. scale. Is, yeah. yeah. No, you set the right. <laughs> and they give us. Oh, you. Well, <laughs> between this we, and this, you get this percentage off. If you get the, you know. Oh, it's a percentage off. Yeah. 
Well, so coming from a college where financial aid is a big deal, you set the tuition higher so the people that can afford to pay it, pay it, and then they can help fund the people that aren't can't afford it, who do get a discount. So and like ideally, health insurance. Hmm? like health insurance. Theoretically, this is how it should all work. But if you don't keep if you don't keep the tuition at a level that helps fund everything, then that's where you get into trouble. So I just want to be mindful of that. That's really sure, we'll get the tuition rates next month. And, uh, I don't want to freak problem. people out that we're going to raise the rates too high. It's still going to be very reasonable. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. We should probably check with the other schools. Yes, I know. I imagine it's so all the same. Well, a couple no. of years ago, we did do that. <laughs> we compared ourselves with the others because we wanted we wanted to increase our prices. But if we did, we'd be pricing ourselves out of the market. Right. You don't want to do that in the market. No. But do all the schools charge the same here in the district? Like I don't even know that. The three schools, I would hope. So it's not like you're playing one off the other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They month, didn't use the same <laughs> be nice hours. To know. Right, that's true. They're different hours. But the hourly rate total total should, total. should be comparable. Mm -hmm. I would say. It was, month, it was a monthly bill. Mm -hmm. So it I think is it's a per day, diem. Yeah. I do think it's a per diem. And I do think they're standardized throughout the district. Rhonda takes care of it, of setting up the bills in our office, mm -hmm. and she and Kim work very closely on it. But I do know that when we made the change last year after the school committee said, yes, go ahead with the full day, mm -hmm. that there was a lot of thought and discussion that went into the rate. It just never... Um, mm -hmm. Getting the rate into the computer so it bills right. Because if I'm not mistaken, they bill you for the total number of days and we divide it by 10 months and so you get the same bill yeah. every month like after school it, exactly and then if we have a snow day we go in and give a credit okay. which is nice is that different because <laughs> when i when mine were in preschool there was no change when there was a snow day because the day was added on at the end there's no credit. Oh, so we continued. So, but but like sometimes the the little um, if we don't if we don't finish the year, like if they're if they only the, the first five, five. They only go to let's say can we go to Monday? We don't, we only go to Friday with the kids. We're not bringing the, the early child in for half a day on Monday. So you right. end on Friday. So you don't make up that snow day. So we get more. Maureen's saying she never got it. I never got well, it. Well, the opposite. Well, maybe you never. We never had it happen when you were. Yeah, there's snow <laughs> days. And if there's a um, two-hour delay, there's, there's snow because it was only one. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Well, maybe our next meeting we could talk about. We'll have Rhonda come. Yeah. Rhonda and or Kim. And we'll, just and we'll to explain. So, I, I don't yeah. need to yeah. get into the nitty-gritty. I just want to make sure, sure. that we're I do thinking think through. And I do think that longer term. they're right. They might end like on a fr like we planned on ending school on Tuesday this year. Now we're up to Monday the following week. And after this week, it may be Tuesday. But the problem is early childhood starts a program. And I think they start a summer late and program. Early. Well, they start a program for the summer. And I think that starts. Um, we yeah, last summer it was here. So they had to stop preschool yeah. at a certain time. So I, 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 but there will be a summer program, and I think that that's, it may start before July 1. It may start that last week in June, but it may start uh, that first week in July. I don't know. We'll bring that information to you. Yes. I mean, I'm mostly most interested in the budget, but we you clearly want people to get built. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did ask Rhonda about it one time because I was curious. And, didn't quite understand it, but she seemed confident that it was, yeah, it was all good. Oh, so your money's in that revolving fund. Yeah, yeah, for your donation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. Well, so I, well, I was, I'm curious to understand the school choice fund again. I think, I think when the finance yeah. committee sees yes. what we're paying out of school choice, yes. It's 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 remarkable. It's, telling, yeah. it's re really remar remarkable. But that's why we need to keep getting people in to pay for these yeah. services. So I think the only, you know, we do need to be aware of uh, page twenty six, is that 
you can see where we look like <clears throat> the projected ending balance for next June, a year from now, is that. However, there might be, does that include the new school choice coming in? Or so if you look at the, the projected revenue is what we're getting in 18, because what mm -hmm. we what we normally spend in 19 would be our 18 money. Mm -hmm. So what I have in that column, that 323, 356, is what they're telling me I'm going to get, plus we added the, I added the spend increments that, that Karen says that we're going to get. Okay, so but we already spent 122,358 of it in 18. Mm -hmm. So we only have 200,998 of 18 money left. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna spend 332,463, which means we're spending 131,465 of 19 money, mm -hmm. which is almost half. Mm -hmm. Because so we're the, getting back 20, the 27000 for the tuition to the schools, is that yes. right? Yes, we'll get that back. And the transportation? Yes. But not the snowblower. But not the <laughs> snowblower, no. <laughs> so you won't pay for that? No. Um, so that's kind of one-time money, right? Mm -hmm. So the next year it's going to be lower than the right. revenue. So without the spend increments, what they're projecting was 234, 582. So this is the page really for the town to understand um, because these are costs that would need to come onto the town budget if, or we'd have to look at cuts which we don't want to potentially. I'll bring up like I told you like I think it was the last meeting back when we did school choice years ago mm -hmm. the money that was that we had in school choice we always had some for a rainy day that year we always spent the money on things that every single kid could benefit from. Mm -hmm. Not take care of, not, not in so many words, take care of all these salaries right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Or tuitions to mass school for, for a charter school for one kid at $27,518. That's, that's, you know. So why has that shifted? Has there been a big increase in staff? Well, every time, well, go ahead. You probably could say it better. Than I Historically, did. it was like it, it was money for extras. Mm -hmm. right. But then, as as our budget started to increase and the town couldn't afford the increases of the, we we had to start using it for necessities. Okay. Yeah, I That's noticed I the saying. town increases were quite low for many years. Right, and, and they continue started. to be. They want us to be at two and a half percent. Mm -hmm. But when we when we negotiate a rate of two and a half percent, plus we have steps. And we have degree changes. So uh, I was just I was talking with Dr. Carey today. There was um, we have a listserv of all MASBO, um, Massachusetts Association of School Business Officials, and they were all discussing what percent what if percent of increase do you consider a level service budget? Mm. And consistently, it was between four and five percent. If you want us to keep everything as it was last year we need an additional four to five percent hmm. and that's what i was saying a little while ago having a budget that's four or five percent mm -hmm. and so we could they wouldn't handle that so it started falling over to school choice right. when i first got here we had so much money in school choice we were able we got left off don't ask me how um but when they were putting internet through the, all the, the rural towns, we were left off. Yeah. So we used our school choice money to, to pay it ourselves to get on to we get on. Wait, wait, elementary. Yeah, yeah. We, I think it was, and I want to say it was thirty-four, thirty-six thousand dollars. And every other school district got on for free, but we had to pay to get on because mm -hmm. they forgot us. Mm -hmm. Who forgot us? This big consortium of people who were bringing internet to the rural. There was a name for it. I can't think of it. Off the broad, my head. Yeah, whatever that. Mass broadband. That's what yeah, it was. I think it was. That was in Warwick too. And we, we were so we were, we were so happy that we had. And I I repeat it. I'll repeat myself. But we were so happy there. One year we had fifty thousand dollars that we could buy a whole computer lab. This thing that on wheels. 
and there was 20, 25 computers that got wheeled to every single classroom at different times for the kids to use them. That was the first com real set of computers that could go to a classroom and take right to your desk and stuff because there was a, I don't know what they call it, a brain there, and these computers ran off the brain. You know, it's. But it was, it's re right. But those but a lot of those expenses have moved into the regular budget. Mm -hmm. It sounds like. Yeah, but not it's because they become more critical. It's, it's, that's a fair thing to I say. Mean, right. Because those became necessities. Right. Like as it seems to me those would become more of a like a technology line. Yeah. Right. 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 And now that's but a necessity. The problem is the budget's growing too fast overall. Right. And that we just don't. The revenue's not growing as fast overall. It's like that frontier. We use money. We use E and D money. To bring down the assessment to have a lower assessment instead of having a higher one there again we like to have a little bit for a rainy day but we're taking the rainy day money to bring down the assessment to the towns right well that's the, that's the trade-off yeah. yeah. um so i for again for us i think it's my, to be mindful of these positions and not that we want to cut people but if a position opens up we want to be very careful thinking about how to allocate that position going forward it seems to me so that we don't have to get into a position of cuts going forward. Mm. I mean, thinking long term, like five or six years. Or if we can continue to keep school choice up, then maybe. The thing is, the town isn't increasing, I mean, the state isn't increasing the school, school choice money the or the funding for the schools. So that's the other piece that we're working against. Well, again, that's the political piece. Right. We send one kid to a charter school, and, and we need four school choice kids to, to make up for to it. balance it out. Right. And, and that's and why the Teddy folks are upset about So it's a terrible it. system. I'm, I'm just saying in terms of the, what we, what the cards we're dealt. Like, I am not for all that. But it's, and we're lucky we're on the winning side. Right, right, right now we're in a good place, but we need to stay there. And we're pretty lucky after we're almost breaking even between <coughs> incoming and outgoing and paying for all those outgoing things, charter, mm -hmm. everything. We're just about breaking even. Mm -hmm. Where other school systems Right. I mean hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're they're losing out from Okay, well it was a good discussion. I think we have a good plan. Mm -hmm. To bring to the finance committee, how you're going to revise it based on the revise the charts, and you'll revise the charts thank based you. on that. Yes, thank you. That's um, great. And then you'll send this. Well, can you copy me when you send it to Brian so I can like make sure I'll copy, copy all, or copy all, all of this. Yeah. Um, so you'll send it to Brian so he can get it to the finance committee. Yeah, because yeah, we didn't want them. Oh, we didn't get it in time. No, we give them plenty of notice. I think my a plan would be to highlight a lot of fiscal choice funding. Sort of, you know, the operating budget is one thing, but then the real challenge is this sort of rest of the budget funding. How do we continue to do that as costs continue to grow? Because that's longer term, I think, where the problem is. Right? It is. It's true. And you said it earlier uh, that it, it's it's that connection you know some might say well if you cut this this and this um, that'll help but if you cut this this and this we may not get as many people wanting right. to come to our it's school it's a balancing right act. if our class size goes up if we don't have an assistant in every classroom if we cut art or music you know that's good that'll change things in yeah. terms of who wants to come so it's a fine it's a tight wire yeah but we're doing a good job so we want to so. keep going in the right direction that's right Okay, anything else? Are we ready to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn at? Uh, 754. 754.